Uh, today I want to talk with you a little bit about how to develop your empathic gifts uh, because a, a few people ask about it. Um, for one, how to understand and how to know what kind of gifts you have. That's a kind of a different topic and it's not really from, from experience and really I've been working with um, a couple hundred people on this topic over the last six years and the same with myself so understanding and finding out what kind of empathic gift we have that is very individual so there's not really a general guideline and how to understand that and how to figure it out of course you can read a lot of books about what what gifts there are and then with whatever you identify the most but that usually is really confusing especially with empathic gifts it is um a little bit uh, the journey in and off itself, to be honest. Um, um, it depends on what we're ready to see and what we're ready to acknowledge about ourselves. So especially for empath, the person development part is huge, like really huge, because um, some of the gifts reveal themselves throughout the journey, the journey and understanding who we are and what stories we have created and what do we need to let go of. It is a lot of um, coaching from experience, and, and I'm sure those who have gone through that experience themselves with other people working through that know that. And to really define your empathic gifts, it, it takes um, awareness, it takes practice, and um, to figure it out, I, I really believe, and, and I'm not just saying that, but I do believe that it takes someone else to look in from the outside to see it more clearly. So how to develop your empathic gifts. So let's pretend and just think about that you already know your empathic gifts, that you know exactly how you're supposed to use it. And now is the development part. And we're talking development, guys. It doesn't happen within one or two days. It took me quite a few years, but I'm also stubborn. So that might be a little bit of a difference. Um, for you where you can say, oh, actually, I can figure it out faster. And you might, and that's um, everyone's individual journey. It's not just, um, yeah, however, again, what I said, how you're open to experiencing the empathic gift, how open you are to actually using it, and how open you are to acknowledging it about yourself. So there are different, a lot of different components that play a, a very big role in developing your empathic gifts. So even though consciously you may say, you may say, oh, I'm ready to um, embrace my empathic gifts and I'm ready to really use them in the way that I'm supposed to, it uh, doesn't mean that your subconscious mind automatically says, yes, of course, we're going to do it. Uh, there might actually be something like, well, let's figure a couple things out. Let's take a detour here and there. And so you really learn to to implement it, to trust your intuition. Developing your empathic gift is a lot about trust, and that's what a lot of us are missing because, again, we're receiving so many different information from the outside that it is often really difficult for us to differentiate if it is mine or if it's someone else. So the first thing is, even if you're an empath and you, you know what your gift is, the first thing is, learn how to understand on what it is to be an empath, uh, meaning um, how can I become, and we've talked about that many times, how can I become the observer of my surrounding instead of being right in the middle? I always explain it this way. Um, as an empath, we get really easily sucked into the mud hole. So if you if you can envision it, like uh, let's say the world is almost like a, a, a mud hole, like you know this the kind of um, swamp that that pulls you in. Like the more you move, the more it pulls you back in. That's pretty much how you can explain the journey of an empath. Uh, we often get sucked into the social issues, everything that's happening around us with people things that we want to see change where we're really passionate about something and then we get sucked into that mud hole and the more we dread and the more we try to get out the more deeper we sink in and we feel like we can't breathe we're done we're done i'm sinking it's not working 
Um, and so I think to really develop your empathic gifts, it is taking yourself out of the mud hole and to become um, and take altitude and to watch literally from a bird's eye view, not just other people, but also your own life. And that's a lot of uh, around um, awareness. I mean, really, there is a reason why I have been working for six years now uh, with my own coaches. I switched pretty much between three back and forth and, and how they were able to support me on that specific stage um, that I was in and still in. I, I, for myself, I know I will continue that journey for as long as it takes, as long as I, I know I have to do work. I have work to get done on in this world um, so it is about creating awareness pulling yourself out of this mud hole and becoming more of the observer and watching and becoming still um, I know from other empath you are the more powerful the more you understand what it means to be in stillness um, if you always rush and you have the fast pace of our society getting you trapped like that mud hole, uh, it is really, really hard to develop your empathic gifts because you can't focus in. Your empathic gifts is a whisper and you can't really hear that whisper when there's a lot of noise around you and that noise could look like uh, people that you have in your life things that you do that don't really serve you, that might be your beliefs, your head stories, there might be a lot of noise going on. To really develop your empathic gifts, we have to tune out the noise and become very still. And that's an art. <laughs> that is literally an art um, to, to sit and just be and, and be still and not try to rush with the, with the peer pressure um, around us. It's hard for me. It's hard for me creating a business sometimes to not feed into and buy into everything everyone is trying to tell me to do and just really embrace the stillness. But the most and the most amazing development I've seen in, in understanding my gifts and how to use them was when I was able to really master the art of stillness and silence. It's almost like you become a monk. <laughs> I know that's hard in our society, but that this is really, you need to learn to listen very clearly. If you don't, you can't hear. As I said, your empathic gifts are whispers. They don't yell at you. They don't tell you screaming, um, this is what you're supposed to do with it. This is how you're supposed to work with it. It's not working this way. And trust me, I mean, I've worked with hundreds of other empath warriors and empath over the last six years and including myself and talking to other experts to spiritual teachers they everyone is saying the same thing if you want to develop your empathic gifts you have to master the art of silence and stillness first thing second thing is to find that deep um, place um, of peace within yourself so even when you are not in stillness like when your environment is when it's moving everything around you, that you can still find that place within. Okay, so for example, how I started to master it over the last probably two years, uh, when I'm in a, in a, at a grocery store or when, when there's just a lot of noise going on around me, I literally imagine a bubble around me. That doesn't mean that I don't experience anything on the outside, but I become so still on the inside that it almost feels like just from from the way that the peace that I feel within even though there's a lot going on I can literally um, drag that out and everyone around me seems to become quieter too and it's a really great place to observe from but it takes practice because we're being taken out on those who are moms it's even worse or have like little kids with you all the time it even harder but you can actually wrap them into that bubble too so they become more more calm as well and you can observe together you can even explain it like i explained it to my son like let's become a little quiet let's take a deep breath and just create that bubble around us so we're not so affected and get rattled up with all the noise around us that is the second one that you really have to start to master to hear your empathic gifts to really understand and be able to use them powerfully. 
Uh, the second one, and this is one reason why I teach about emotions, is to be able to navigate your own emotional world. At the, then we're at the third point. You navigate your own emotional world. This is the very, very important, as I have mentioned to you a couple of times, your emotions are your native language. So to master that, you have to be able to really navigate through it and understand what is it that I feel so you can eventually identify that with other people. So that means the more awareness you create about yourself, the more awareness you create about other people. Uh, the more you can recognize things and the less you respond to people or react to people on the outside, the more you can stay within that space of observer um, and hear like messages, if it's through angels or God speaking to you, like there are those whispers like, hey, ask them this question or tune in with them, point something out. Whatever your empathic gift is and where it is leading you, it could be within nature, it could be within earth in general, it could be um, emotional, it could be physical, it could be on a molecular level, that you have this gift to connect with people on a molecular level. Uh, maybe it's it's something, maybe your empathic gift is driven by smell, um, that there's something about a specific, I, I know one person, she was able to um, distinguish a very specific smell that is connected to cancer. So she has been able to help cancer patients to early on already to say, hey, I think you need to get checked out or there's something. And she had to learn that over many years to really trust that instinct. Um, and so again, it's the same. Um, if you understand your emotional world and what you feel, you're more clearly able to distinguish if it's your own or if you're just um, experiencing it from someone else. Okay, so that's the third point. Um, and then from there, when, when you have that mastered within yourself, that's when you're able to really hear the messages. You can... Uh, pay attention to signals, you can pay attention to um, how people interact around you, maybe suddenly they, something shifts within them, but you can only pay attention if you're not so busy with yourself. Um, and that again requires that inner place of silence, that, that mastering the art of silence uh, within yourself, creating that peaceful place and being aware of your own emotional state. Are you just being triggered by that person, whatever they said? Is it something to do with your own story? Or is it really something that you picked up on with um, that person? Maybe something that you can support them in. Again, remember, even as an empath, we have a fix default behavior. We're not here to fix. You are not called to fix anything because we're coming from a place of um, people being whole and perfect at the very core essence. And from a from a spiritual standpoint, that means God within a higher power, their higher self um, that is never broken. So they do have the ability to fix themselves, even though there's not really anything to fix, but to work through that. And all we have to do is to be with them. And sometimes when we hear messages is to say, hey, I hear this about you, or I'm recognizing this, does that resonate? Or I just feel called to say something about this or that. Um, it is never about fixing someone. And I had to learn that the hard way, trust me, because I always felt like I need to fix them, I need to fix them. And then I got really anxious when the clients didn't respond the way I wanted them or thought they had to feel. Um, and it got, read, got, got me wrapped into that hero mode and I was always overwhelmed and at some point burned out by working with clients because they always felt that me like, I have to fix them. I have to give them a specific result of what they're supposed to experience. That's what they pay me for, but it's not true. Especially as an empath, our healing work is to be with them, to give them the space to explore, to discover. And that's pretty much the work of a coach. Um, for those who are really trained, that's, again, that's my story and people might agree or not agree with that but i do believe that every life coach should be certified and trained um because it's it's a really important place to to be in like you can slip off really quickly in either direction uh, but that's just me um i'm it 
though it sometimes triggers me. But uh, that is important just to know that you do not have to fix anything as an empath, no matter what kind of um, gift you have, even if it's related to nature. Um, it's hard to say to not to fix, but I like to... I like to exchange it with the term improve. Even when you're an earth or a nature empath, um, we are focused on moving forward and not staying with the past of what has been done because we can't change it. Empathic work is always forward moving work. So even if you're an earth or a nature empath or an animal empath, it is about moving forward meaning improving so that could mean that you're involved in some kind of um, organization that supports nature and environment and whatever that would look like but that also could just mean that uh, whatever type of empath you are you're using that as a tool within other work that you're supposed to do and called to do and that is a discovery journey not everyone is supposed to be called to do exactly what their empathic gift is sometimes it only helps us to use it as a tool so for example someone might be an animal empath however um, that doesn't mean that they are supposed to work with animals automatically or are supposed to be animal whispers it could mean that the animals are actually just tools for something greater and that depends on the combination of your gifts. Again, that could be in, in combination with that you're an animal and a physical empath, that you're an animal and a, um, I don't know, like um, an emotional empath, intuitive empath. It really depends on the combination of your gift and how you can use that. When you want to develop as an empath, you have to learn to ask the right questions, especially being able to connect spiritually so you can receive the answers through um, divine guidance, through your higher self, through whatever you want to call it. I'll leave that up to you. Um, that That is pretty much the journey that you're going on in developing your empathic gift. It doesn't happen within a day. It doesn't happen within a month. And most of the time, it doesn't even happen within a year. It really is the journey that lays open that gift that you have and how you're supposed to use that. I mean, for me, seeing colors around people, I, I'm explaining it to you this way with my own gift. I always knew, like for me, I thought it was normal that I see everything in color. Who knew? I thought everyone does. Duh. Um, so um, over time, I just do them like, oh yeah, the, the, the number two shows up in yellow or that place shows up in blue. Maybe there's something like, for example, I see my city, Indianapolis, as in yellow. And um, how I interpret this one is actually that there's a lot of leadership potential that we're not tapping into yet. So nothing. Not, doesn't really have anything to do with the journey itself. But so over years, I it was 18, 20 years where I didn't even pay attention to it. I didn't even understand what that was about. It was just normal to me. That's how I grew up for me. It's like, well, everyone probably does it. And then, and then I, I had people call me out on things like, hey, you have this ability to do this and this, and, and people respond differently to you. And um, now my eye is twitching. Um, it's just, you need to really pay attention to what comes from the outside. Are there any people, excuse me, are there any people that say something to you? Are there, is there anything repetitive that's showing up? Uh, a picture, a message, anything that, that really just jumps out at you. And for me, it was part of the journey of being able to, to come to the US, obviously. So it's, it's a very unique journey that I was on. But when you take a look, it only really developed over the last four years. And I've been doing this work for probably 10 years. And just over the last four years, I started out as a normal life coach. I just pretty much coached everyone else. Then I went into financial coaching and then I went into relationship coaching. Before, I really understood what it was about me that made me unique and who I really want to work with and who I'm attracting and how I can use my gift. So it is through other situations that we develop and, and understand our gifts and how to use them even more. So don't get wrapped up about it. Like, I know I'm an empath or I'm an empath warrior, but I don't know how to use my gift. 
it is not the essential part. The essential part, the really the most important part is the work you do with yourself, within yourself. So eventually it will be revealed to you. It becomes really clear, like emotionally you just know it. You're just so connected to it that you just know this is it. And if you can remember, I always just said, oh, I can see people, uh, colors around people, and this is how I use it. Like, it's not really aura, I don't really know what it is, blah, 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 I don't know how to define it. And then just a few months ago, probably like six months ago or something, I just like, oh, tonight I don't feel like doing anything, I'm just gonna read something. And suddenly this book shows up on my Kindle, um, the girl that reads hearts and I connected to the author and she's by the way amazing um, her husband too they live in Austin and I was like oh my gosh that's me that's me that's exactly what's happening this is exactly how and what I'm supposed to do with it this is how my message comes together with everything I've done so you see I've been doing this work for 10 years but really just now have distinguished that yes I am reading people's hearts this is what I see this is how I'm supposed to use my gift so it is a journey, and I just gave you the, the little steps, or big steps, um, to take that are really important and essential for you to tapping into your, um, your empathic gifts and to use it wisely, to use it for a greater good, and to use it in service of who you are and in service of other people without burning yourself out. If I would have understood that gift before, this whole journey, I don't think I would be doing the work that I'm doing today because I would have been burned out. I would have been uh, probably fallen back into depression and anxiety, but I needed to go through those steps um, to, um, I see now I work with more um, people that are more uh, already more developed. So I needed to develop too to still be able to support them. And again, this is why I work with my own coaches consistently. Uh, because otherwise I can't move it forward. I would always stay where I'm at and not really develop myself. I have to do the work on myself to be able to support you guys. So, um, if, if, again, if I would have been able to, to distinguish it exactly how I'm able to do it now, I don't think I would be where I'm at today. I'm 100% sure it wouldn't be the case. I probably would have um, suffered from depression and anxiety again and just kind of fallen short on everything I ever wanted to do. Um, so now you have it. I think I mentioned three or four steps that are really important for you to develop your empathic gift. You have to focus on yourself first before you can take it outside. Um, and again, your empathic gift don't necessarily are what exactly you're supposed to do or whatever. It could be simply a tool that you can use in a specific area that you're called to work in. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Because not everyone is supposed to go out and do Reiki and heal people. Not everyone is called to, even as an empath, not everyone is called to um, go and, and join Greenpeace. Not everyone is supposed to uh, become a social worker um, to use your gift the most and, and the wisest. It really is very, very individual and it takes more than one person, meaning more than you, um, to take a look and to reflect things back to you and to help you understand, hey, this is what I see. This is what I recognize about where you're going or maybe other people get visions about you. If someone comes to you and says, hey, I feel like I needed to tell you this or I feel like there's a message here, take it with a grain of salt and say, oh, I'm listening to it and then go and meditate on it. It's like, how can I use it, what they just said to me? Learn to ask the right questions. Like, um, if you know you're an emotion, em, emotions empath or even a physical empath, is this pain that I feel mine or if it is someone else's? Listen. Your empathic gift is a whisper. If you try to develop it within the, the space of noise and overwhelm, it will never work. You will misuse your gift and you will um, probably hurt yourself more than actually that it helps you. That's my experience and again, I've been doing this work for quite a few years. I've worked with a couple hundred people um, and myself, so I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
So trust me on that. Um, it, it does make sense. So have some fun with the things. Don't don't take it too seriously. Even as an empath, we tend to be quite serious. Um, have some fun with it and just experiment a little bit. Be a child with it. I think that's the best thing to do. All right, guys, have a great day, and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye.